Next, I'd like to introduce Michelle Lancaster, Director of Sustainability at Microsoft Corporation. Ms. Lancaster will speak to us about scaling ambition into action, the case for investment, innovation, and inclusion. Hi, my name is Michelle Lancaster. I'm Director of Sustainability Strategy at Microsoft and here uh, with you today, delighted to talk about our work on sustainability and the importance of innovation, investment, and inclusion when it comes to sustainability. Probably not surprising a tech company wanted to talk about innovation today. The first thing that I think is important um, when we have a conversation about sustainability is to get grounded in what each of us mean when we come to the table. Microsoft had a very deliberate conversation about this at the senior leadership team less than a year ago to really re-solidify our strategy. We've been doing this work for more than a decade. We set our first carbon reduction target in 2009, implemented an internal carbon tax, and became carbon neutral as of 2012. Um, but the strategy review really helped us solidify what it was that we wanted to do and the unique place in the world that Microsoft occupies to really drive sustainability, not just inside our own four walls and for our customers, but really around uh, the entire world. And what we decided was that we needed to reset our ambition. It was necessary, but wholly insufficient for Microsoft to continue to focus on how to make Microsoft as green as possible. And in fact, we needed to play a role in making the world as green as possible. And so we reset our North Star, which is to become the leading platform provider of technology solutions to environmental challenges for every person and every organization on the world in line with our mission. And we also took a moment to sit back and think about where are the areas that the world most needs technology solutions? Where do we have our biggest material impact and how do we drive those things together? And so for us, when we talk about sustainability at Microsoft, we really focus on four issue areas. It's carbon, water, waste, and ecosystems. Those are areas of importance for us. Um, carbon from our data center operation is not an immaterial thing. Um, we use water in all of our facilities and we have a waste footprint both from our devices and from our operations as well as an impact on ecosystems. We're really excited though about the opportunity to deploy our technology and what we've learned inside Microsoft over the past decade to really drive better change um, and more accelerated change across the rest of the world. The other part of that senior leadership team review was really around the sense of urgency that we saw then and see today. And that is really precipitated by a 2018 IPCC special report that indicated that we have far less time and a lot more work than we thought we had to do in order to avoid the worst impacts of climate change by 2030. And that's why we also formalized our strategy to think not just about our operations, but to dedicate ourselves equally to building the best products with the lowest impact, accelerating our customers' work on their own journey, accelerating the use of policy and regulatory frameworks to include improve the uh, floor and the ceiling for um, environmental efforts, and then really put our employees at the center of all of this work. They are the first people to tell us that we need to do more, and they're the ones that are doing all of this work. Since we set that strategy, I'm proud to say that we've actually set our 2013 ambitions across all four of those areas. That has put us on a path to operate as a carbon negative, water positive, zero waste company that's also building a planetary computer. That's a lot, so I'll unpack it just briefly. We went from carbon neutral to carbon negative um, with an intent to reach that by 2030. We also committed to remove all of our historical emissions by 2050. Um, it's a pretty big change for us. Um, we are looking across all of what's called, known as scopes of greenhouse gas emissions. So our operational footprint from um, our data centers and electricity in what are known as scopes one and two, but also the entirety of our supply chain and the energy consumption driven by our products like Xbox and Surface devices, as well as um, the end of life of all of those materials. That's a pretty big commitment, somewhere on the order of about 16 million metric tons of carbon that we have to reduce, replace, um, or remove by 2030, but we're committed to that work and we think it's what the world needs. Um, and certainly, as we said when we announced it, those that can do more should do more, which is why we were committed to that removal of all of our historical emissions. 
We just recently announced our water target to become water positive. What that means is that from an operational standpoint, we will replenish more water than we use as a company by 2030. When it comes to waste, um, we've already been on a path in our operations. Our commitment expanded that to all of the work that Microsoft does to become a zero waste company and increasingly centers circular economy principles within how we make, manage, manufacture, and distribute devices. Then finally, with ecosystems, we committed to build a planetary computer, which simply means that we intend to build a compute platform that is strong enough and fast enough to process planetary level data sets and to make sure that we're capturing all of those data sets because you can't manage what you don't measure and that is where we have started all of that work. Now, that's a little bit about where we are from an operational standpoint, but as I mentioned, we think that's really just the tip of the spear when it comes to what Microsoft can do in this space, which is why we're really focused on driving a product and customer engagement strategy to help everyone move as quickly. It starts with helping everyone understand where they are and their footprint today. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in the business world that um, management of supply chain and commodities is down to an exact science. Management of carbon, water, and waste is still in many cases an estimate um, experience. And uh, while we love people using Excel spreadsheets at Microsoft, we think there are better ways to manage your data, especially on such important issues. So really starting that journey in developing products and transparency and features to help everyone better understand what their footprint is today, because that's the on-ramp to getting better tomorrow. And that leads us into the second part of our engagement strategy. It's really developing and deploying the solutions at scale that can help people move more quickly. This is sometimes through an industry approach that we're taking. So for example, working with the financial services sector to better understand down at a granular level, what impact are ESG investments having, understanding the implications of climate risk in your investment portfolio, all the way to energy companies who are trying to reinvent themselves as renewable energy companies, divest their their own fossil fuels and continue to improve efficiency. We are also working across all of those industry portfolios to find new ways that allow everybody to better manage those four issue areas that we've talked about. And finally, at the end, um, the thing that gets us really excited um, and what we'll talk about a little bit more is around the importance of investment and in innovation. I think all technology companies um, will tell you that we are working really hard to make ourselves better, and that's true and important. All of us are working on platform solutions and services that will help our customers better manage their footprint. What the world really needs, though, is investment in innovations that haven't been created yet. Uh, we know that we have a very large gap to fill in the rest of the decade to get to 2030 with a chance of still hitting our Paris Accord goals. And that means we have a lot of work to do. Um, we intend to do that work in a collaborative and um, involved nature with the rest of our customers. These problems are too big for any one company to try to develop one solution um, that fits all of them. And so we're really excited about the idea of where we can co-innovate, build net new solutions um, with our customers, and in some cases with uh, people that would normally be considered our competitors. So now that you know what Microsoft is doing, probably a good time to take a step back and figure out how this could potentially apply to you and why we're doing it in the first place. Um, and the easy answer is that it's both what companies need to do and what companies should do. Um, and it is increasingly an expectation not just to have the right PR around sustainability, but to do the right things and to measure it correctly. That's an expectation that has increasingly been set by our shareholders um, as we look across the investment opportunities um, and how they're evaluating companies. We really see that um, it's not just what our investors want, uh, out of us, it's because of the performance that it's driving. And so investment in sustainability, not just on a couple of efficiency improvement measures, but really deeply transforming the business so sustainability is embedded into the C-suite, embedded into all of the business groups, and is really at the core of what every company makes and manufactures and sells to customers. It makes a real difference on financial bottom line. Um, we've seen this already through some research that's been done about how um, that MCI has done around companies that have highly are highly rated on the ESG scores, um, how they tend to deliver performance, and we have seen this um, in extremely. Uh, 
detail in the past um, several months as we look through COVID recovery. Companies that are well regarded on the ESG scale have performed um, and outperformed their peers as we've gone through this economic recession on a global level. So investors are driving it, but not because they want to see a change in the world necessarily, that's helpful, um, but also because it has a very real business case and a business return on those. I also think it's got a massive business opportunity um, and not just for technology companies like Microsoft, but really for every company to take the time to embrace this opportunity for sustainable digital transformation. There are just a couple of numbers that I would talk about um, in this space. Um, the first is there's about a 60 billion opportunity around energy optimization. And that's something that everyone has, whether you're um, managing a, a building, a retail facility, or a manufacturing facility, better um, optimizing your energy consumption can both lower your operational expenses and substantially lower your carbon footprint. We see the same thing in agriculture, and there's approximately $12 billion worth of value to be unlocked in the agriculture space by embracing more sustainable operations, um, eventually enrolling your lands into soil sequestration and carbon credits, and a way to better access subsidies and insurance rates in the future. And finally, on that note, we see carbon markets simply exploding uh, through the rest of this year. We've always been an investor in carbon markets since we became carbon neutral in 2012, but we believe, um, and based on the research, that this opportunity is going to grow substantially, and that is both in terms of companies and organizations and countries enrolling in programs um, to note that they are reducing their carbon, but also in companies that need to purchase that to meet their own goals. And we expect that market to be approximately $200 billion by the end of 2030. So it's not just good things for business to do, it's actually good for business. Now, with all of that investment, with all of that energy in innovation and that investment um, from the financial services, you might be wondering why we're still so focused on it because clearly it's problem solved. Not uh, in the slightest. As it turns out, the number of green technologies that have been underinvested in by some time and the length of time that it will take to get those to market at scale is still a really big problem. And that's something that we've also committed to closing that gap not just through our own investment um, in innovation, but really through um, deploying our capital in different ways. So uh, like Amazon, we also have a um, external investment fund that's really intended to accelerate innovation. Um, ours is called the Climate Innovation Fund, which we introduced this January. It's a billion dollar fund that is set up really to focus on uh, accelerating technology development and deployment in several key areas. Um, and that is, these are areas that are traditionally underfunded. Um, renewable energy has seen a great amount of investment. It's incredibly important. But we know that there are other areas like alternative materials composition, so carbon-free cement, for example, low carbon building materials, um, investment in nature-based solutions, and really looking at underfunded markets, both in terms of technologies, but also in terms of geographies are really important to have a focused investment strategy on. Even if you're not Microsoft or Amazon and don't have a billion dollars to uh, set aside towards an innovation fund, we think that this is something that every company and every organization should be looking at. They represent excellent investment opportunities, um, green bond opportunities, and also partnership opportunities. And this is really where we're going to get to the next generation of those Paris goals. For us, it's uh, looking at energy systems, at um, industrial supply chains, and then around resource optimization. Um, we have nine areas that we are focused on deploying funds and excited to say that we have already made our first three investments out of the Climate Innovation Fund. The last thing that I want to talk about uh, today is around inclusion. Um, and I think that that is the last of the eyes that we have to get right when it comes to climate change. The technology will come, the innovation will come, the investments will come. We have to be extremely careful and extremely diligent about ensuring that those are done in an equitable and inclusive way. We know that the countries that are most likely to be hit hardest by climate change are the ones that are least industrialized, least developed, and least invested in. 
They have, in many cases, most of the world's natural resources, um, but the least access to capital. And that's where that innovation and investment with a focus on inclusion can really drive transformation forward. We have made equity and climate inclusion a key principle of the Climate Innovation Fund. The transition um, to a just and equitable future from a sustainability and economic point of view is a core reason that we focused on removing our uh, historical emissions. And it's also at the heart of our biggest renewable energy purchase ever. We announced this July that we were going to take a different tack to investing in renewable energy. Usually when companies do this, we focus in on the best price, the best location, um, and the largest amount of sort of bang for our buck out of these power purchase agreements. What we found though, is that that tends to mean that most of these renewable energy projects end up in communities where they have a high degree of wind capabilities. So they tend to be oversaturated in single markets and very rarely are they um, owned or operated by um, companies that are in those communities. We did a 500 megawatt deal with Soul Systems this year to try to change that. It's a portfolio approach that will find and develop projects inside particular communities that have been traditionally underserved, um, that lack access to renewable energy. And we've paired that with grants to ensure that those communities not only benefit from clean energy, but have the ability to gain the skills to be part of that clean energy workforce, and also the potential to actually take an equity stake in those projects as the developers um, have, purchased, uh, have purchased and built them. Um, and so I think the thing that I'd like to impart to everyone today is that we have a lot of work ahead of us. It is going to take everybody to do more. I could talk endlessly about the number of technologies that Microsoft is developing in this space from better estimating your carbon emissions from moving to our cloud services, to the smart building solutions that we've implemented already in King County to help drive down carbon efficiency. But the most important thing is the framework that we all use moving forward. We'll all take different tacks and different paths and different technology providers to get there, but we need to make sure that we are really focusing on innovating, on investing in places that are gonna get us there faster and making sure that we do it in an inclusive way. So that is what you should expect from Microsoft in the next 10 years. Uh, we will be carbon negative, water positive, net zero, and uh, building a planetary computer all with an eye on how our investments advance an inclusive and innovative future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lancaster. We're taking virtual questions in the chat area and on our LinkedIn event page posted in the comments section. Visit the page later to view answers, ask additional questions, and join in the discussion.